Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today, that word is pouting, pouting. Uh, now, maybe not a word you're expecting to hear from scripture, but it's not really written there, but that's essentially what Jonah is doing. If you remember yesterday, we talked about him being angry, and uh, I really believe this is probably in contemplation of that question that God asked Jonah is it right for you to be angry? And that's what we talked about yesterday. Is it right for us to be angry with God? Uh, remember, this is all where Jonah's upset because God uh, saw the repentance and the obedience there uh, to the word of God there in Nineveh. And so he essentially changed his mind into the destruction that was coming their way, that he had mercy on them. Uh, we see the same mercy he had on Jonah, same mercy he has on us as well. So let's dive right in. Jonah chapter four, we're just going to look at one verse today as we're going to be finishing up this chapter this week and finishing up the book of Jonah this week. But uh, Jonah chapter four, verse five says this. So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city. There he made himself a shelter and sat under it in the shade till he might see what would become of the city. Now you might think, well, that didn't sound like he was pouting to me. Well, if you remember that right before that is when uh, what we see written in scripture is, is it right for you to be angry with me? And you kind of get, he doesn't, Jonah doesn't give him a response. He just storms off. I, you know, I can see this and, and whether or not this is exactly how it happened, I don't know. But, you know, and as I always say on, uh, in our sermons and things that, hey, in my spiritual imagination, I see him storming off and going to sit down. You figure he was already, he entered in the west, uh, west side of the city. He just kept on going east. I imagine that he kind of got up on a hill uh, where he could look back towards Jerusalem, uh, you know, so he could kind of see a glimpse of home, you know, imagine that he was looking back towards home, uh, though it was a very long ways away. And so I imagine he could see that uh, in his mind, but at the same time as he's looking home, he could see Nineveh destroyed. But wait a minute. Didn't God say that he had changed his mind? Didn't God say he'd relented from what he was going to do? So why do we read that Jonah is going to sit on this hill? Or it doesn't say a hill, but uh, I imagine he had to be sitting somewhere where he could kind of see the city. Um, and I imagine it was. And as, it, as he's looking towards the city for it to be destroyed, but isn't? You know, the fact that God had apparently already told him, because isn't this why he was so upset? Isn't this why uh, Jonah was so mad that, you know, hey, God, I knew that you were going to be God and and have uh, mercy on them. This is the whole reason, you know, this is the beginning of chapter four. This is the whole reason I didn't want to come here in the first place. So why? Why would you go sit down and watch something that wasn't going to happen? I mean, why sit down, take time out of your schedule? Right. I mean, to to just sit there in the heat, you know, we, as we find out later in this chapter. And that's the reason he set up uh, King James calls it a booth. It's kind of the, the same thing as the uh, the feast of uh, tents. that reminds them of the things that uh, or tabernacles that, as well. That reminds them of the little temporary housing that they had while they were in the wilderness, uh, the 40 years and wandering in the wilderness. And, and so. Uh, as he's doing this, he sets up this little temporary makeshift shelter. And apparently it really still wasn't doing him a lot of good, as we'll find out that, um, you know, he was, still wasn't getting a lot of protection from the heat. So why would you go through all this suffering, uh, this heat and everything else, just to watch something happen that God already said wasn't going to happen? Because it had to be for, I mean, a certain period of time, because I mean, he, his word was that in 40 days, so obviously we know a few days had already passed for all this. So, I mean, he's still waiting, what, at least a month out there in the heat in a makeshift shelter to see something that was never going to happen. But God already told him that. So to me, that's part of the reason I believe in his pouting. I believe that he thought that his little temper tantrum against God, that you know, when God said, is it right for you to be angry? I guess he just thought that in his storming and storming off and in everything that maybe he had told God that I knew you were going to have repentance on them and, or that you were going to let them repent and you were going to forgive them. I believe that his, I mean, we're finding out how deep his hatred is for the Ninevites and how much he did not want them to actually be able to experience mercy. 
And again, I keep saying this, but it's the same mercy that God had on him when he ran the other way. He gave him an opportunity to come back and he gave the same opportunity to the Ninevites. See, I, I believe that um, he was very determined. And, and I don't know, he was determined in the wrong thing, unfortunately. But I honestly believe that as he's sitting there, he was hoping and probably now praying more than he was before because we didn't see much praying before. I believe he was hoping and praying that God would change his mind once again, that he would go back on his mercy. I believe he was hoping that his little temper tantrum, his little pouting that he was doing had maybe swayed the heart of God. I mean, if God could, God's mind could be changed before, maybe it could be changed again, right? But see, here's the thing. Prayer changes things. <laughs> Repentance changes things. Confession changes things. Even fasting changes things. Sacrifice, service, obedience, all these things, and the list goes on. All those things change things. And it can change the heart of God, right? Change the mind of God as we talked about relenting. See, because that's what exactly what Nineveh did. They had a change of heart. They repented and they uh, declared a fast and, and they began turning their hearts back to God. And so that's why God relented. But see, those are the things that change the heart of God. Jonah, guess what? Pouting is not a way to change the heart of God. But now you and I know that. Right. As we're having this discussion, I know a little one sided, but as we're having this discussion right now and understanding that pouting and and throwing a fit, getting angry with God, as we talked about yesterday, does not accomplish anything. But why do we do it? I mean, how often have you right? How often have I? But uh, how often have you been angry with God? To the point that you pouted and said, well, I'm just not going to listen to what you said. I'm not going to believe what you told me. Because, I mean, isn't that essentially what Jonah's doing? I don't believe, God, that you're still going to spare them. So I'm going to sit right here and watch and see what's going to happen to the city. Why? Because it wasn't Jonah's will. <laughs> it wasn't what he wanted. So he's angry and he's pouting. Because he didn't get his way. But I'm glad he didn't get his way. I'm glad that God's will was done. And so many times in our lives, if we don't get to that point where we understand that God's will, God's way is always better. And no amount of pouting, no amount of anger, no amount of screaming at God is going to accomplish anything. No, prayer, <laughs> repentance, confession, obedience, service, fasting, sacrifice, all these things, that's what's going to change things. So my question for you today is this, and it's very simple. Are you pouting or are you praising? Are you pouting or are you praising? Because let's not miss the fact that a whole city turned from their evil ways and turned to God. And instead of praising God for the work that he had accomplished through Jonah, no, Jonah was sitting there pouting. He was more upset about not getting his way done than he was about lost people coming to the Lord. All because it's not what he wanted. So today I just simply ask, are you pouting because you're not getting your way done? Or are you praising God because his way is being accomplished? Pouting or praising? It's an easy question today. But sometimes it can be hard to answer. God bless you. And I pray you have a great, great day.